says, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them and healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the village and buy themselves victuals. And Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they all did eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about this little miracle here today. Just a small little miracle. We're going to have a good time talking about it. Are you ready? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Pray with me over this message today. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, God. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for being in this place. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would have your name. God, do all that you want to do, Lord God, that your name would be glorified, that your name would be magnified, God, that you would be lifted high today, God, that you would get glory, that you would get credit, that you would get honor, God. Oh, Lord, let your word go forth and do what you have been planned to do today, Lord. Oh, we thank you, God, for being in this place. We thank you for being with us today. God, I thank you that you have a plan for us today. Oh, when we woke up, God, we are now in your plan. God, have your way. Do what you want to do in our hearts and lives today. Oh, Lord God, get the glory for this. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. So we go back through to, uh, to verse 14. Uh, I want to let you know that just out of these seven verses, I, I, I stopped at three pages worth of notes. <laughs> I turned them face down, so it's not to try to get used my notes this morning. Else we'll be here for just a little bit longer today. <laughs> so we're going to just try to let the Lord lead us and do what he wants to do because there's so much meat in these seven little verses. Uh, it is quite amazing. So here we go. Verse 14, he says, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them and healed their sick. Listen, this was a great and awesome miracle that happened. But it happened coming right off of Jesus going through a bit of devastation. If any of you have uh, headers or headings, headings in your Bible, at the very beginning of chapter 14, you'll see it says the murder of John the Baptist or the beheading of John the Baptist. Different Bibles have, have in different ways. So yeah. John the Baptist went through being killed. John the Baptist was family, relative to Jesus. They were pretty close. As well as he was this great and awesome prophet that Jesus himself preached about. None has come that is greater than John the Baptist. And then he said, but yet there's one that stands here that's even greater than them all. So he put John the Baptist way up there on his pedestal. But then John the Baptist gets killed. And right before we start off to see what's going on here in verse 14, they get to tell Jesus, uh, roughly uh, verse 11, maybe somewhere around there, I don't know, and uh, verse 12 maybe. They come and tell Jesus, hey, John's been killed. And Jesus decides to get into a, a boat and head out to a desert place. He's trying to get alone. Now, of course, we don't know why. The Bible doesn't tell us why Jesus is trying to get alone. But somebody had passed away that he cared greatly about. Maybe he was getting away from mourning. Maybe he was getting away for a time of prayer. Maybe he was getting away to try to encourage himself and strengthen himself and just take a minute to breathe. And remember what the purpose was for his being here on earth. But either way, the people heard that Jesus was heading over to this desert place. And like people do on, you know, Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, we're supposed to be giving praise and thanks and honor to God. They went and found him and bombarded him. They, they rushed him. And when Jesus, we pick it up in verse 14, he steps out and he sees this large crowd. He was trying to get away for his own moment. But it says he saw the crowd and he was moved with compassion towards them. Listen, God says that he calls you to be ready in season and out of season. 
We're supposed to be ready no matter what. Christ is our great example. In this, I will just say and move on. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Amen. When it's time for God to move, be ready. Amen. I'm sorry that somebody may have passed away. I'm sorry that you may have lost your job. I'm sorry that you may have got some devastating news. Maybe a, word, a sickness has spoken over your life. Cancer or COVID. These days, I can't tell which people are afraid of more. But still, <laughs> when it's time to move, let God move your heart and have compassion on the people that are around you, just like Jesus did. It says he, he had compassion toward them and he healed their sick. The inference here is that all of them were healed. Every last sick person that came was healed. He didn't just heal some of them, he didn't heal a few folks. He healed Amen. their sick. That's an all-inclusive phrase. Amen. Amen. He didn't say, man, all right, I, I'll, I'll get a few of y'all. I'm, I'm really trying to get away. I'll get a few of y'all. Who's the most sick here? I'll get you. The other ones you can wait till later. No. We don't understand. Moving on to verse 15. It says, and when it was evening, here we go. This, somebody say, this is about me. Come on. This is about me. All right, come on. This is about me. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him. Somebody say the church. Here we go. Come on. When it was evening, the church came to Jesus. Uh oh, come on. When it was evening, the disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place, and the time is now past. In other words, it's getting late. It, it, supper time done came and went. Lunch time done came and went. It's getting late, Jesus. And we out here in the middle of nowhere. You know, food line about to shut down. They close at like 10 o'clock. We got to go. Elsewise, these folks can't make it to the store. Come on here. This is a desert place and the time is spent, or this is past, excuse me, send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy some food, buy some victuals. They had thought this thing through in their mind, right? They have a good, they have a good point. They, they, they've seen the problem. The problem is there's a great crowd of people and they need to eat. This is a pretty big problem because we get down to it, it was 5,000 not counting women and children, right? That's a pretty big crowd. Anybody ever fed 5,000 people plus women and children? Right? That seems like a, a pretty impossible task, even with just 12 folks. Come on. The disciples come to Jesus and say, listen, we got a problem. And we thought this through. And here's what we think you need to do. Jesus, send these people home. Anybody ever done that before? You ever came and somebody's giving you an issue, maybe they're, they're talking to you, and your, your thought is, well, here's what you need to do. You need to just, you just need to, you just need to quit listening to Jesus. You just need to have less of Jesus. You just need to stop reading your Bible and don't listen to Jesus. See, they thought it through and it sounded good. When we read it, it sounds good right there in the middle of nowhere. They're in a desert place. They need to go get some food. Send them away from you, Jesus. Help me understand that the problem that you're having the answer is never less Jesus. The answer to your issue is never to get away from Jesus. The answer to the problem is not to get out of the presence of the Lord. Oh, that's the wrong way to go. Go ahead and give me the next verse, son. Jesus, of course, speaks to it immediately. <laughs> he hears their argument. It's a pretty good argument. And he answers, they need not depart. That's the wrong answer, disciples. Church, that's the wrong answer. We need to stop preaching on the blood. No, that's the wrong answer. We need to stop preaching on the death and resurrection of Christ. No, that's the wrong answer. We need to stop preaching on sin. No, that's the wrong answer. That Bible is offensive. We just need to cut it in half. We'll just preach just the, the good stuff. No, it's all good. It's the wrong answer. He says, you don't need to send them away. They don't need to depart. Give ye them to eat. Oh, the commandment has been given. You feed them. You feed them. Come on. They appear in my presence. You think there's a problem? Fix it. I've equipped you. I've given you this command. Yeah. You are the disciples. You are the ones in charge. You are the ones that are supposed to be my church, my people. You feed them. Yeah. It was impossible. 
Church to reach Springbrook seems impossible. It does to me. We're a little old church over here outside the city limits. <laughs> We're in the extended extraterrestrial or terrarial zone or whatever they call that thing. We got to ask the city what to do, but then we don't get a vote or a say what happens in the city. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of sad. We got to listen to them, but we can't offer any advice or get a voice. And yet, the Lord has sent us here to reach Spring Hope. Amen. Seemingly impossible task. There was more people in this story, you understand me, than in the city of Spring Hope. Come on, let's just put that in perspective. Come on, let's just put that in perspective. There ain't that many folks in Spring Hope, but people. 5,000 plus women and children. You start putting it together. If each man had a wife, that's 10,000. If each man and wife had one child, that's 15,000. If they had two kids, it's 20,000. I mean, it just, it just keeps growing. Right? He said, you feed them. You give them something to eat. As if Jesus didn't know what was about to happen. Oh, but the disciples didn't know. I love it. Verse 17 says, and they said unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. I feel like they said it just like that, too. Right. Well, you got one five loaves and two fishes. You know, your voice gets higher and higher and higher. Yeah. We ain't got nothing. We got nothing to eat. That's only enough for me, Jesus. What about everybody else? Five loaves and two fishes. Little barley bread. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, if you're reading a couple of... John is the only different, uh, only only uh, gospel that tells us that it's a, a little boy that has the five loaves and two fishes. They tell us what kind of loaves it is, and oh, they give us examples of, of various different things. I challenge you to go home and read in the different gospels and put all the pieces of this uh, this parable together, or this story. Excuse me, not a parable, the story together, uh, and see how this event turned out. It is it is quite amazing. Anyhow, they find out in one in one of the gospels it says. Jesus says, how much, how much you got? And they go find out, and they come back to Jesus and report, this is what we got. Either way. Verse 18, he says, bring them hither to me. Guys, this is, this is extremely important. <clears throat> the command has already been given. Go feed the people. God has already given you your calling. Come on. God has already given you whatever it is that he has told you to do. He wants you to go raise your kids. Go be a husband to your wife. Go change Spring Hope. Go tell people the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go uh, evangelize to the people at your school or at your job or wherever it is. Go and be ye therefore, I don't know, a missionary or a pastor or an evangelist or, or something. When you get saved, God puts a calling into your life. Amen. And there's that tugging that's constantly there. I need you to go teach my people something. I need you to go spread the gospel. I want you to go lay hands on the sick. I want you to go feed people. And it seems impossible. So the calling has already went out. Feed my people. And in this impossible time, we as the church sit back and whine and complain. I ain't got no money to do that. I ain't got no time to do that. Well, Lord, I don't know how to speak that language. Well, Lord, I don't, I don't understand. I, when I read your word, it just gets all jumbled. Lord, I have this or that or ADD or dyslexia or, or I'm poor or whatever. <laughs> whatever it is. We make excuses. He says, bring me what you got. Get this. Bring me what you have. Does Christ know what you have? Yes. yes. Does Christ know that if you have ADD or dyslexia, or yeah. does he know if you're poor or got a, a million dollars in the bank? Yeah. Does he know if you're a man or a woman or if you speak a language or don't speak a language? Yeah. Yes, God knows everything about you. Christ knows everything about you. And still he has called you. It is an impossible task because God's going to get the glory. Come on. Give me the next verse. Next verse. And he commanded the multitude to sit on the grass. We're going to get to that in a minute. 
That's just as important as everything else. And he took the five loaves. You understand the disciples, they went and got the five loaves and two fishes. They brought the five loaves and two fishes to Jesus. Jesus takes what they give him, all that they have. It says he takes the five loaves and the two fishes and he says he looks up to heaven. Christ acknowledges authority. Amen. Come on. Amen. What we're supposed to do. Right. He blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples. Do you understand? The, the disciples gave the loaves to Jesus. Jesus blessed it. Jesus broke it. And then he returned it to the disciples. Amen. Oh, that's what he wants to do with you. Amen. That's exactly what he wants to do with you. Amen. Come on, we're in the Christmas season. We're supposed to be looking out for the extra giving and the helping and all the jolly cheer and all that wonderful stuff that we're supposed to do at Christmas time because it's the season of giving and Amen. whatever. People don't understand that as a Christian, it's the season of giving all year long. God. What do y'all got there? Jesus took everything they had. God, I'm, I'm hopeless. God, I can't breathe. God, I don't have any money. What do you got? I got a dollar. Give here. God, I can't breathe. What do you got? I got a voice. Give it here. God, I, I, I'm not some great uh, uh, evangelist that I can speak really well. What do you got? I got two hands. I know how to, I know how to do carpentry. Give it here. What do you got? I don't know. I'm, I'm all the time sick and lame and people don't like to be around me. But I can pray. Give it here. Christ will take what you have. Whatever it is, he already knows you have it. He will bless it. Amen. Oh, come on. That's first and foremost. Amen. Christ is a Christ of blessing. Our Messiah came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly, the Bible said. Amen. Come on, he didn't come as a as a, a lightning rod, as a judge, as a as a, a one to strike you down. He didn't come as a cursor. He said, No, I didn't come for that. I came that you might be saved. Amen. Come on. Oh, judgment's coming. Don't get me wrong, judgment's coming. But Christ came to give you life. Hallelujah. To give you a way out of that judgment. Anyways, he blessed it. And then it says he, he broke it. Now, breaking is twofold. Breaking is twofold. When you break something, you're removing stuff. Uh, my youngest was cooking sausage yesterday. She had a uh, a cast iron skillet and she had a, a iron spatula or a metal spatula and she was flipping the sausages and scraping stuff and some stuff had built up on the spatula and she wasn't able to flip the sausages all that well and she was looking at it and it was kind of hot and I said you give it here and I grabbed some paper towels and I, I broke off the, the the stuff that had built up on the spatula and he cooks in here you understand what I'm talking about there was just gunk there was just excess grease and grime and stuff and then it got on the edge and she couldn't quite scoop up underneath and she was just she hit a sausage and it would fly off the end of but I, So she couldn't quite get it flipped. I said, give it here. And I, I took the towel and I broke that stuff off of that spatula. So now that spatula could be effective to do what it was supposed to be doing. Amen. I broke that excess buildup off of that thing. <laughs> Understand, breaking something is not a bad thing. Come on, when we give our life to God, he breaks off of us the sin, the shame, the condemnation, the judgment, all the things that we put upon ourselves. God, I'm not good enough. Bro, break it off. God, I'm not worthy. Break it off. You're my child. God, I can't. Break it off. Yes, you can. You can do all things through me because I give you strength. Come on. Right. Christ breaks these things off of us. And then he breaks us. It says he took that bread and those fish and he broke it. That's multiplication. That's multiplication. Understand, sanctification and multiplication comes in the breaking. Oh, I'm giving you some good stuff this morning. I hope you can receive it. Amen. Come on. Sanctification. Being set aside as holy. It comes in a time of breaking. Amen. 
where God breaks off of you the things of this world, the things that you have picked up and collected, and then he breaks you to be able to multiply your gift, to be able to multiply your purpose, to be able to go ye therefore and do what he has called you to do. Next thing you know, you thought you didn't have time, you got plenty of time. You thought you didn't have the money, you have plenty of money. You thought you didn't have the effort, you got plenty of effort. You thought you didn't have the skill, and you're standing before leaders and kings as Peter and Paul did. These clearly don't, they don't know anything, but somehow they're able to dispute the word of God. Wow. God multiplies everything in your life. Your shoes last longer. You go longer without getting uh, uh, sick from the winter season or summer season. The grain in your uh, dog food bins and your chicken bins last a little longer. Yeah. Amen. Come on. The flour in the meal, it, it's stretched out. And you're able to make more bread and more cake and more whatever. Amen. More brownies. Come on. Oh, yeah. Nobody ever really likes brownies? It's okay. <laughs> it says he blessed it and he broke it. Amen. And now here's a big deal. He gives it back to his disciples. He places it back in their hands. Oh, come on, I've said this many a time. I have never received a check in the mail, signed God. I've never received a check in the mail, signed Jesus Christ. Many times I've received a check in the mail that came right on time for the exact amount I needed, exactly when I needed it, Amen. and it was signed by a human name. Amen. God uses people. Amen. He used his disciples. He could have got up and fed all those people by himself. But he didn't. He took it. He blessed it, he broke it, and he put it back in their hands. It's up to you. Now, go do what I told you to do. Think about this. He already gave them the commandment. You feed them. It was impossible. They couldn't do it. They placed everything they had in the hands of Jesus. He did what Jesus does, placed it back in their hands, and now, all of a sudden, Something's different about those five loaves and two fishes. Something's different about that mind that you think you can't use. Or that wallet that you think is too empty. Or that marriage that you think is too broken. Or that school that you think is impossible and you just can't figure it out. God does something different. He changes it. Amen. Yeah. And he places it back in the disciples' hands. And then the disciples go and feed the multitude. Oh, come on, get that this morning. Yeah. Obedience is massive Amen. when it comes to a miracle. You must be obedient to God. If you want to see a miracle in your life, if you want to see a miracle in your family, if you want to see a miracle in your town, if you want to see a miracle in your job, wherever you are, obedience is key. They just said, No, I, I go. Jesus said, What do you got? We got five loaves and two fishes. Give it here. No, Jesus, this is impossible. We're going to tell people to go home. Imagine they were people when they got fed. The miracle had never happened. They gave all they had to Jesus. Jesus gives it back to them. And they might have said, ooh, man, this is good. I ain't never ate fish like this before. I ain't never ate bread like this before. I'm going to take it to my house. I'm going to put it in my pocket. I'm going to put it in my basket and take it on where I, this is just for me. Twelve disciples could have gotten together and said, hey boys, this is good stuff. We're going to keep this. Matter of fact, we'll put a little bit of it in a museum so everybody can see what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, tell me the same to what the church does. We write a history book about it. Meanwhile, people going hungry every day. Amen. Meanwhile, people going without the gospel every day. That's awesome. Come on. I'm going to take that blessing and put it in my pocket. Give me a new suit. I'm going to give me a new Cadillac. Come on. You seen that Ford I've been driving? I deserve a Cadillac. I've been preaching for years. Come on, that's what churches do. And the whole time, people are going by without the gospel because they're being disobedient to what God did. God is still faithful. Come on. In this in this. Miracle, God was faithful to do what God is supposed to do. He said, I'll bless you, I'll multiply you, I'll call you, and I'll equip you. 
Come on, he called them to feed and then he equipped them to feed. Guess what? They still had to feed. They didn't sit back and say, well, Jesus wants me to do it. He'll, he'll just bring in a bunch of saved folks and make it happen. No, they still had to go out and feed the masses, these 5,000 people. These followers of Jesus, but yet not disciples of Jesus. Ooh, let that sink into some people this morning. Go ahead, son, give me that next scripture. <clears throat> it says, they all ate and they were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained the 12 baskets full. Two miracles went down here. Come on. First off, Jesus fed 5,000 people plus women and children with five loaves and two fishes. It could have been the exact amount. Come on. I just told you I received checks in the mail for the exact amount that I needed at the exact time that I needed. That's a miracle. Amen. Christ is able to do that. Amen. Lord, you know what I need, and boom, there it is. Amen. Right there in the mail. Amen. Then, oh, there were 12 baskets left over. Amen. Yet a miracle. Number two. Huh. How'd that happen? Not only were people fed all that they wanted, they were filled. Come on, it takes a lot to fill me. They were filled. Ah, John got that one. They were filled. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. They didn't just get one bite of bread and one bite of fish. No, they were filled. And then yet still, there were 12 baskets left over. Hmm. You mean God is able to equip you? Yes. And then sustain you? Yes. And then bless you? Yes. And then increase you? Yes. Oh, if you could only get a hold of this one little major miracle that Christ did right here. It changed your whole life. You understand the God you serve is able to do this every day. Multiple times a day. Go ahead, give me that last verse. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 beside women and children. You say, wow, that was a miracle. Well, if you keep reading, God does it again. <laughs> Get a whole other section. He feeds more people again. <coughs> and then yet the disciples, after all this, they thought at one point in time Jesus was talking about some bread. Because he was saying, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. And they were thinking he was talking about food again. And Jesus was like, don't you get it? Didn't I feed the 5,000? Didn't I feed the 4,000? Wasn't there baskets of food left over? Am I not able to do whatever needs to be done? I'm not talking about that. As the church, we often get in that same spot the disciples are in. Jesus did a miracle for our life last year. Jesus did a miracle for our life this year. But today, we're still worried about what we need to survive. Today, we're still worried about the food we need. Lord, what am I going to do with my time? Lord, what am I going to do about that secret sin? God, what am I going to do about that co-worker that's just bugging the snot out of me? God, what am I going to do about that unsaved one, that lost loved one, that you name it? Jesus has done this throughout time. If you know anything about your history, anything about the church, you will see miracles over and over and over again. The key to the miracle is that they gave the Lord all they had. And when it was time, they were obedient to do what God called them to do. Church, that is what the Lord is asking us as New Life Temple as a church, as his hands and feet, as ministers of the gospel, as disciples. He's simply asking us to do what he has called us to do. And if we'll give him all that we have, he'll do mighty miracles for us. Over and over and over again. The question is, will you do it? 
Will you give God all that you have? <coughs> he had five loaves and two fishes. I'm sure Christ could have fed the crowd with one loaf and one fish. Amen. He said, bring me what you got. There would have been a counterfeit miracle floating around out there. Somebody would have been eating on a loaf, not blessed by the Lord. Don't you want everything you have to be blessed by the Lord? Come on. There are, dare I say it, there are parts of our heart that we hold on to, that we, that we hide. We don't want to give it all to God. We're afraid. I don't know. Lord, if I give it to you, then I'm acknowledging that there's a problem. Yeah. Lord, if I give it to you, I acknowledge that I'm not strong enough to fix it. Yeah. Lord, if I give it to you, you may decide to tell me to go give it to somebody else, and I want to keep this. <laughs> check out, check out this, just this quick. According to John, that bread and those loaves, it belonged to the boy. It didn't belong to the disciples. It belonged to the boy. Some young boy there had five loaves and two fishes. <coughs> the little boy first had to give all that he had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Childlike faith right there. Mm -hmm. Then the people in charge of what was given to them, the church, had to do right by it and give all that they had. That's us, guys. That's us. Then the church goes and does the job that they were called to do. They fulfill the commission of feeding the people. But Christ doesn't forget about the little boy. Christ sends the little boy home with 12 baskets of, God. of blessed and broken purpose. Oh, come on. When he blessed it and he broke it for the disciples, he blessed it and broke it for the little boy. Oh, come on. Yeah. That one little boy gave five loaves and two fishes and came back home. Mama, look! Praise God. Yeah. Praise Lord. I got 12 baskets full. It is broken up, ready to have a feast. Call the neighbors, call the family, call the town. We're eating good. Amen. Come on. That little boy received just as much if not more than that whole crowd that's in. Wow. Mm -hmm. Listen, Christ wants to do that for you. It takes faith. It takes belief. It takes trust. He will take all that you have. But then when he gives it back to you, oh, you better look out. Because it's blessed and it's broken and it's ready to go. Is there something in your life that you're still holding on to? Hmm? Is there an area of your life that you refuse to give to God? Lord, I come to church on Sundays. That's good enough. Hmm. So it's your time. Lord, I, I give $20 in the offering plate. Oh, so it's your money. Lord, I, I struggle just to buy ends meat. Oh, so it's your food. Lord, I, I don't even, I don't even, Lord, I don't even like those people. Oh, so it's your prejudice. Come on. Is there something you're holding back from the Lord? Come on, search your hearts this morning. Give me something back there on the speaker. Search your hearts this morning. God wants to bless you. Amen. And this is how it happens. Amen. By giving God, not me, giving God all you have. You understand? All. Now hold on to that. Oh, it's a little scary. Don't get me wrong. I understand. I'm, I'm human with you. Oh, but the, the results is a miracle, the results is a blessing. And if you'll pay attention, Christ had the crowd sit. 
Different, different places. He had them sit by fifties and by hundreds. Listen, the crowd, in my opinion, is the world. They were followers of Jesus, but not disciples of Jesus. They hadn't made the, the transition. They were following. At one point in time, he says, you're following me because I feed you. Oh, he got upset with them. The only reason you're around me is because I give you food. He had them sit down because Christ is in God order. He said, hey, I want you all to sit down because I'm about to do something mighty and you need to see it. And if you follow in the scriptures, every time there was a great move of God where multiple people got saved, it was preceded by a miracle. Christ does a mighty miracle and thousands get saved. Christ does a mighty miracle and hundreds get saved. Christ says, watch what I'm about to do because it's going to change your life. And the disciples were a part of that. You can be a part of that. Christ will come into your life and he will tell the world, sin, hush, right in the middle of your life. And immediately you're elevated. Come on. Immediately you're in the middle of a miracle. It's up to you, church. Are you going to give everything to God? Or are you going to still hold on to it and try to do it again in 2022 like you've been trying to do it in 2021? Are you going to keep trying to go through that same mess year after year, month after month, day after day? Or are you finally going to trust God? All it takes is everything. But it'll be blessed, it'll be multiplied and clean. And give them back to you. Oh, come on. What do you need this morning? If you need saved, come and get it. If you need healed, come and get it. If you want to just come and pray by yourself, come and pray.